Here we go then. Any questions for me on the rules? Don't grab the cage when you're fine and don't kick or knee the head of a downed opponent. And that's a stare down, guard. guys. Hi, guys. Today, many people know how Eric Ash, nicknamed Butterbean, knocked it out huge and experienced guys in boxing, MMA, and kickboxing. But his career was not without setbacks. And now we'll remember all of Butterbean's losses in MMA. In his first mixed martial arts bout, Butterbean took on Genki Sudo in an open weight affair at K1 Premium 2003 Dynamite on December 2003 in Japan. Despite having a 240 pounds weight advantage over his four, Ash was unable to capitalize as Sudo was unwilling to exchange strikes. The Neo Samurai took Ash to the mat with a low single leg takedown at the end of round one and attempted a leg lock only to be heightened by the bell signaling at the end of the round, which had been a stalemate up until then. Early in round 2, the fighter stumbled to the ground after Sudo attempted a drop kick on Ash, and the Japanese grappling ace took full advantage of American boxer's lack of grappling skill by securing the heel hook submission. Having lost his MMA debut, Butterbean stuck with the sport and regrouped, going six win streak in United States promotions. He returned to Japan with the Pride Fighting Championship on August 2006 to compete at Pride Bushido 12 against Kuhisa Minova, a shoot wrestler known for his willingness to win over Butterbean. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my words of command at all times. If I say stop, you stop. Just touch gloves, get ready for war. Right back. Parsing Pride briefly to compete in Cage Rage, Ash submitted two strikes from Rob Broughton in the second round of their contest at Cage Rage 19 in London, England on December 2006. Rob Broughton has this exactly where he wants it. He's, got, he's, he's giving him his back. He's got the arm locked with the legs. Broughton can finish this from this position here. But I've been trying to power his way up. Butterbean trying to defend, trying to pop the leg, pop free from that leg. Butterbean trying to use his strength just to grab the leg and twist it. Rob Broughton's got to get on top here. Rob Broughton's got to hustle. It's back to standing. This favors Butterbean. Rob Broughton should throw a low kick there. <laughs> there it is on cue. Broughton should use the jab here. The jab is the weapon right at the nose. Got to be careful of the Hail Mary punch. Let Butterbean get tired throwing that wild right hand if that wild right hand lands it could be the end good job just, Bob. just use the they go low single right under the knee it was an easy takedown butterbean's in trouble now i don't know that this is a good strategy actually because it's gonna be hard to get butterbean with a clean shot from this position butterbean looks in trouble taking those shots as brighton sits in top mount position Maybe. Look at that. Uh-oh. No, no. You Turn don't want Butterbean butter on top of you. You do not want Butterbean on top of you. Oh. No way. Butterbean, by sheer force of, of weight, is going to present a problem for Broughton, who pops Broughton. out now. Butter takes to the back. Butterbean. Butterbean struggling on the bottom. We're almost at the end of the first round, guys. And there it is, Rob. There's the bell. 
It was all Rob Broughton in round number one. There it is. The left hand is not going to do necessarily damage. And look, it was so low. It was below. It was actually an ankle pick because he grabbed the ankle and he got the shoulder up against the knee and it pulled straight down because a single leg, Butterbean's legs are so big around, you can't really get a single leg takedown. That was a low blow and Rob is not a dirty fighter. It was accidental. But if there is a danger for him bringing the man down, I think, didn't we see this with Mark Buchanan? There's a danger of dragging the bigger man on top of you. Yeah. Mark Buchanan actually made that mistake. Well, it wasn't a mistake. He went for the takedown and his opponent, much bigger, landed on top of him. There's a danger for that as well. But there? I don't think that's going to happen with a low single leg or an ankle pick like that because if you go for a body lock or a shoot for a double like that, it's possible for him to lay on top of you. Or if you get his back and try suplex him, of course... <laughs> Butterbean sucking him in again. Well, Butterbean can't move around. Butterbean just moving around is going to burn cardio. Rob Broughton suddenly look at now. Rob Broughton's got to be careful with the low kick. Mouthpiece. Oh, okay. Wet floor. <laughs> Left hook now he changes and Butterbean trying to lure him in. That's what he wants. If he follows up with the low leg kick, this is the danger, as I said, of falling on you. Yeah, it's a danger, but Broughton is still a pretty big guy. Butterbean is not mobile enough to do damage. Carrying too much weight. Now the choke is going to be really He's difficult. Tapped. Hey, He's tapped. Look at this! It's all over. Butterbean came in bragging about boxing. People can't take his punch. And who tapped out by strikes? Butterbean. Rob Broughton further cements himself as a hero here in the UK and around the world. People are taking notice. And it was the mobility there, as we mentioned, guys. Look at the replay. Look. Straight down. Looks to strike. I think Butterbean knows he's in trouble. All he's going to do is sit there and take more punishment. Sensible option. Oh, no, I'll tap. Yeah. He, he, he knew he couldn't do anything because he was basically on his side. Again, we had a Humpty Dumpty situation. And once he fell down, he couldn't get back up and he couldn't defend. And, Rob, you mentioned, um, Steve mentioned that cosmetic damage. But by the end, uh, I felt there's only going to be more of the same. It was, yeah. all, it was all Rob Broughton in this fight. I'm telling you. What, what happened here was we, we had a star in Butterbean. Here we got any questions for me on the rules? Thereafter, Butterbean won several famous fights, including against James Thompson and Zouzinho. And his next fight was on July 2007 against reigning Cage Rage World Heavyweight Champion Tengiste Duradze in a non title bout at Cage Rage 25, losing via TKO. You can see the size of Butterbean faced Nick Penner at an event named The Fight Club, First Blood, on December 2007, being lose by submission Kimura early in the first round. Oh yeah, a lot of people don't expect out of a guy as big as him, is to see if he has that speed that he had in the boxing ring. Here we go, he locks up, inside leg trip, I see him looking to get that takedown. Nice takedown. Nice. Four up. Solid elbows. Working oh, the body off. Oh, Butterbean's turning away. Kimura. He's tapping out with his foot. He's tapping out with his foot. Oh. Winner. It's Nick better. Better by submission. That he didn't get, that he wouldn't get hit by a punch, and he did exactly that. Good takedown. Butterbean trying a little bit of a sweep there, but... The really good thing is uh, Nick's not a fish out of water in terms of the takedown. To try that inside leg sweep, he had the underhook, and he used that to throw him down. I think that solar plex shot hurt him right there. Oh, yeah, he turned, he turned away. 
Nakamura kind of like backwards ish. Yeah, I've never really seen that one. Impressive. Yeah. I've actually seen that. It's called the Nomura. Working his ground, working his kicks and knees. He's going to be a force. He's a heavyweight. He hits hard. He's doing it all. Well, it didn't take very long, but a very impressive showing for Penner. He showed a bit of everything. Spoke to Nick in the dressing room before the fight. Matt Smith Don't defeated point. Butterbean by NCPO in the first round the at Yama in the fight in April 2008. Bean with a kick. I thought Bean uh, might bull rush him. This is speed taking over. This is good. There's the inside kick again. Particularly above the neck. Yeah, well, right it's hand. A, it's good like, combination it's by like a Smith. turkey based. Matt Smith got in a left and a right. Close enough. Oh, the inside. Oh, right fight. hand. What a technical fight. There he goes down. down. I he thought goes that down. Might happen. They'll never get up again. He's now never going to get up again. Smith can try to chop away at the beam. Not presenting a real good defense, and Smith is just teeing off. Look oh, out. That might be it soon. Smith, rights and left, butter being defenseless right now. We're at 230. Matt Smith is still working. And there's a lot of time, boy. I'll tell you what, Bean's in trouble if Smith keeps landing. Ooh, that was a mean left elbow. Another one. That's it. That is it. Bean taps out. Pat Smith was on his feet, landing low leg kicks, following it up with right to left. Good combinations. And then down on the ground, he just did the rest of the damage. Smith able to get great position, raining blows down. Butterbean lost in the first round TKO to Jeff Coogan on March 2010 in an MMA bout for Extreme Cage Fighting Championship 46, the down of the Bellroom 9 in a devastating 40-second pummeling. On September 2010, Butterbean was defeated by Mariusz Pujanowski by submission due to a strike at KSW 14 in Poland. <laughs> After several exchanges of strikes on the feet, Pujanowski attacked and took cash down, processing through numerous punches from side control in a ground and pound attack. Ash, unable to get to his feet, submitted at just 1 minute 15 seconds into the first round. Będzie przychodziła nadal. 
No miejmy nadzieję. Mariusz wraca. Mariusz jest zdeterminowany do tego, aby być zawodnikiem MMA. Bardzo dobrej klasy. Ciężko pracuje na treningach. Rozwija się w niesamowitym tempie. Życzymy takiej samej drogi i więcej, więcej zwycięstwa Mariuszowi Pudzianowskiemu. A w tej chwili dyrektor sportowy Polsatu Marian Kmita z tym pucharem, którego złoty kolor odbija się w oczach Mariusza Pudzianowskiego. Stanowisko komentatorskie Polsatu, proszę Państwa, to Łukasz Jurkowski. Dziękował mu już Przemek Saleta. Była także... Możesz, Mariusz, się odmeldować! In a super heavyweight special attraction, the world-famous Butterbean had his first fight in Montreal as he took an unbeaten boxer, Eric Barak, who was making his professional mixed martial arts debut. Barak floored Butterbean in the first and hammered away with punches, but Butterbean managed to return to a vertical base and continued to taunt the backpedaling MMA first-timer. Both fighters were visibly exhausted as the fight progressed, and Barak sealed his first professional win at 2.56 of the third round, forcing Butterbean to tap out from a guillotine choke. In his penultimate MMA fight, Butterbean faced Eric Barak at Instinct MMA 1 on October 2011. He lost by submission, guillotine choke, in the third round. Euh, oui, ici, euh, il tient la tête euh, en tentative de guillotine et l'autre bras en dessous de son bras. Alors c'est un contrôle, ici. Voilà. Pas d'action qui se passe, par contre. Éric Barak, c'est terminé! Messieurs, je suis sous le choc. Éric Barak a réussi. Et là, la foule n'est vraiment pas contente de ce résultat. Post-fight, Butterbean expressed his frustration with how the fight played out. I didn't expect him to run. I was told Barack comes to fight. I come to fight. I didn't want to chase a man down. I want to fight. Give me somebody that'll stand there and bang with me instead of running like a girl. And I'll fight them. What do you, I mean, you must mentally prepare and kind of uh, have positive psychology and all that stuff. What goes through your head? What, what are your thoughts uh, when you visualize a fight in your mind right now? Oh, I'm, like I said, there's 10,000 different scenarios going on my head, but I mean, the best scenario in the world is in no, throw one punch, knock him out, walk away, and it's... Uh... Butterbean lose to Sandy Bowen, YTKO, on the first minute of the fight at Prestige Fighting Championship 3 on October 2011, and this was his last MMA fight. <laughs>